If you take a glancing look at history, it seems like America has never been big on heavy tanks. They've only ever serviced a handful, namely tanks like the M103, Jumbo, and Mark A. Despite what you might think, they actually experimented with them quite a lot. A while ago, we talked about the M6, one of their early endeavors from World War II. The M6 very nearly saw use, but it was simply obsolete. Despite the failure of the M6, the army knew that heavy tanks could still be useful. In the European theater of operation, Germany was fielding progressively heavier tanks. This was starting to have a serious effect on the morale of tankers. To counter this threat, the army ordered four heavy tank pilots in late 1944. They would all have the same chassis and turret, with the only difference being their armament. Two would carry the 105mm T5, the same gun used by the Super Heavy T28. These would be called T29. The other two would have a much larger gun, the 155T7. These would be called T30. Over time, the number of pilot vehicles ordered increased. Anyway, the shape of the chassis was very similar to the M26 Pershing. In fact, many components were borrowed directly from it. Proportionally, the hull was made a bit longer. This was done so that sufficiently powerful engines could be installed. Armor thickness was also pretty much the same, though on the upper front plate, the angling was more generous. While the Pershing's plate was only angled at 46 degrees, the heavies had theirs angled at 54. The turret wasn't very similar. The heavies used a new massive cast turret. This had been prototyped on a later M6. The commander was shifted to the back center of the turret, with the gunner remaining on the right. Since the ammo was much larger, there would be two loaders instead of one. In order to accommodate this, the turret ring was expanded to 80 inches. For our metric friends, that's about 203 centimeters. The turret's armor was also thickened a fair bit. The thickest part of the turret, the gun shield, was roughly 8 inches thick. That's 203 millimeters. Only a very slim number of German tanks would be able to penetrate that. The engine was the 4GAC, a 12-cylinder gasoline engine that produced 770 horsepower. This was connected to an experimental cross-drive transmission. Compared to the standard transmissions at that time, cross-drives were much easier to use. They also gave a bit more performance. In addition to the T5 cannon, the T29 also had two coax 50 cals, with the bow gunner having a 30 cal. In March of 1945, before any pilot vehicles had been received, an order for nearly 1,200 heavies was placed. When the war ended in August, this production order was promptly cancelled. In 1947, the T-29 pilots were finally delivered, just around two years late. The T-30 showed up the next year. The T-29 was far from perfect. The cross-drive transmission overheated, the 4GAC was a little unreliable, the suspension had trouble coping with the weight, and it generally wasn't very easy to maintain. On the T-30 pilots, they swapped the Ford engine for one from Continental. It developed a bit more horsepower, around 810. The T-30 had actually already been rejected, way back in early 1945. To Army ground forces, the gun was unnecessarily large. Instead, it was recommended that two T-30s be rearmed. As for the gun in question, it was the 120mm T-53, an anti-aircraft gun adapted for ground use. Compared to the T-29's gun, the rounds it fired were a fair bit heavier, and at higher velocity too. These new tanks would be called T-34. Despite the end of World War II, the heavies were used as test beds for quite some time. For the T-29, it was only officially cancelled in 1950. The T-34 lasted even longer, finally being terminated in 1955. You might be wondering why it lasted so long. Simply put, the gun was extremely promising. Though the gun could still be used, the chassis was very obsolete, so development of a new heavy tank began. This led to the M103. It used the same engine as the T-34, and also used an improved version of its gun. Aside from that, it was a very different beast. It certainly had its fair share of problems, though. The engine wasn't very reliable, the transmission wasn't very good, it guzzled fuel, and the gun wore out the barrel pretty quickly. The army didn't like the thing very much, but the marines apparently did. It was the last heavy tank the US fielded, but there is one more tank we can talk about. While the Sherman Jumbo was well liked in Europe, it did have some capability gaps. Army ground forces requested a new assault tank. To make development as quick as possible, the army decided to use pre-existing components. As such, the vehicle very closely resembled the Pershing, even more so than the T-29. It used essentially the same power pack as the T-29. It used a 90mm gun, essentially the same one as the Super Pershing. This new tank was called T-32, and was actually fairly reliable. The power pack had some issues, but it was believed these could be sorted out quickly. It obviously never went into service, but I still think it's pretty neat. In summary, American heavy tank development was pretty rough. Arguably their most successful heavy tank wasn't a heavy at all, but a medium dressed up as a heavy. Turns out that regardless of the situation, making cumbersome and very powerful machines is very difficult. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.